So good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Mahesh Swami here. And I thank everyone for your present today. And also I thank uh, Ms. Kazala for having with us here today. And uh, she's a PhD student. I think she is doing third year PhD. She is doing PhD in biomatics from Aligarh Muslim University. And today she is going to handle um, uh, introduction session in uh, next generation sequencing. And this will be more or like a short hands-on come theory session. So before moving to the, uh, be, I mean, before handling the slides to Ghazala, I would like to give a small uh, important rules for both uh, participants in UT and the bugs. So Ghazala, uh, can you move the next slide? Yes, please. So these are the important rules. So first, the rules for the participants' webex. So kindly switch up your web webcam for better buffering. And all the participants in webex is always in mute mode. So when you have a questions, try to note it down, and we will try our best to address all the questions at the end of the session. But if it is more important, you could post your question in the comment box or else um, you can you could use the raise hand option uh, from there from your side of the buttons then you also you are welcome to post your questions in our telegram channel called let's learn llb ngs it's not llb programming so it's sorry from my side so try to post all your question in llb ngs then the most important request uh, try your best not to leave the meeting before it ends because it will help us to record the session in a better way and please don't forget to send your feedback via telegram channels and also in a main group so these are the overall rules and introduction for the speaker so i hope everything is fine for the participants so Kazala, you can start with the introduction and you can go ahead to the lecture. Have a nice lecture. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, myself, I'm a PhD scholar at Anupur Muslim University. Uh, my area of research is metrics, specifically in cancer genomics. So, but the uh, main area of uh, focus is right now uh, in next generation sequencing and on this way we are working on these things sequencing and analysis so i will be taking this lecture for introduction of uh, next generation sequencing which will be an overview of the course not exactly in depth in next generation sequencing so let's see just the overview okay kazala uh, sorry for interruption yes, can you make okay. louder Okay, uh, okay. Am I not audible? Yeah, now it's very good. It's audible now. Thank you. Okay, okay, sure. So, yeah, so this will be an overview for next generation sequencing because uh, here we have a time constraint and we can give the introduction section alone uh, for in an hour for next generation sequencing because we know at, as it is uh, like wide spectrum of topics inside within NGS itself. So, let's proceed. NGS. So since uh, everyone uh, who are attending the session, so you might already have idea what is NGS. Uh, so basically, in uh, like generally, if I speak about NGS, so it is kind of a parallel sequencing, which is uh, like uh, better than the earlier sequencer sequencing methods which we used earlier. For example, Sanger sequencing and previous sequencing used. So in this sequencing it is a parallel sequencing which can be done like within few minutes alone but uh, earlier sequencing methods took uh, months uh, and days to complete for like uh, a small amount of data so yeah this is there is a much advantage of ngs over other sequencing uh, methods so yeah and inside NGS, so there are different sequencers also so we can see there uh, two of the sequencers listed here as Illumina Genome Analyzer, then Applied Biosystem Solid Sequencer, and then there is Roche Protocol. 
454. So you might be aware of and regarding these sequencing methods, pyro sequencing and all, uh, we have already one session earlier for introduction of NTS. So yeah, so you might be aware of like theoretical section of NGS, like uh, how the sequencing has been done. Now the next thing, uh, first step is sequencing itself, but once the sequencing is done, then what we need to do with the data and what kind of data is being generated with the sequencers that we will check in this lecture. Yeah, so we have different platforms for sequencing and the data size we can see like uh, we have huge amount of data being generated from next generation sequencing itself. So we need to like see like how to deal with these data, what type of different tools are there and the databases where these tools are available and uh, we can get the data and then analyze it and further like how we can relate that data into the like clinical setup, how we can implement those information when we are handling the data. So yeah, uh, yes, let's move in. Okay, so before moving uh, into the exactly the data analysis section of our NGOs, we need to first to ask the question, okay. Okay, so first we need to understand regarding the file formats because file formats are very important when we want to uh, go really into the study of uh, like any kind of a study. So because here in bioinformatics and also for handling the data in what sequencer are producing the data, we need to understand the data itself and the uh, because the data is in different file formats. So we need to understand the file form file formats because each sequencer will be providing the data in different formats and we need to deal with the, those data as well so yeah let's see like few of the example file formats i have added which are most more general file formats which we frequently use so yes first will be the fa FASTA file format where uh, like uh, sequences are there in this file format and uh, yeah uh, here, the format of the file will be first line will be the header line and uh, which will be containing the information about the sequence which is added next to it. So basically FASTA format is in two lines first and the second line will be the sequence first will be the header. And if there is uh, more than one sequences, then we can call it multi FASTA file as well. So these are just the basics of file formats where FASTQ format is also there where the quality of the sequence and the uh, specifically each nucleotides is also given and the, you can see the fourth line. There are four lines in FASTQ format where the fourth line will correspond to each nucleotide in its and its quality and it will be mentioned in ASCII character. So there is different meaning for each uh, symbol, special characters and alphabet so that we can see in ASCII characters that what are these characters uh, exactly. Next is VCF file format. So here we uh, check VCF files for the like mutation study and where variants will be there that what will be the reference, what will be the reference alleles and what will be the uh, alter, altered allele. For example, there is a mutation from A to adenine to thymine so there will be reference will be adenine and alternate nucleotide will be thymine so different file formats will be having different type of information so that will be depending on what kind of data you want to deal with and you want to work with so yeah because uh, in this type of study we have different type of uh, study uh, for example expression study and mutation study so if you are going for expressions. Ms. Kazala, uh, sorry yes. for the interruption. Uh, you yeah. keep, uh, you always keep eye on the comment box, okay? So if if anybody posts some questions, you can answer okay. instantly. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I will be taking all the questions at the end of the session. So that will be really good to for everyone to concentrate okay. at one time at one point alone. Okay, okay, then it's a good idea. Thank you so much, yeah, yeah, sure. Anna, thank you. Yeah, so depending on the data type and what kind of study you are actually into it, so that will be depending that what type of 
file format you will you will be dealing with so and these different files we we can get from different databases so i will show you also in the practical session that from where we can get these uh, files next is gene transfer format so gtf file format we, we usually we use for annotation purpose where uh, there will be the information given for each uh, codon or exon or uh, like uh, what is the chromosome and what is the position of the chromosome for example you can see here also the fourth and fifth column start and end position given so different files having different information based on the requirement and the study we will go through the files so before starting any kind of study we just go through the basics of it and basic basic starts with the file format itself next is yeah so here it is given that uh, different file formats what we can get from the file formats uh, like why it is important to know about the file formats and to understand the, their information within it so that is just if the application is given as an overview next is the databases yeah so the repository for where we get we can get the data uh, either it is a sequence data or the like whole genome sequence whatever information we want to get so those all and the ncbi we all know that uh, one of the major repository data repository for bioinformatics as well so from ncbi there are different databases within and uh, there are geo database from where we can get magnet data but right now since we are focusing right now on ngs so we, we can get rna -seq or dna -seq sequence data from sra which is inside ncbi and sra is the uh, acronym for short read archive so that we will check in the practical session as well after this or if uh, someone wants to go with the practical uh, like with the ppd itself then we can go along with this lecture so mahesh can you please ask if they want the practical together with the session uh, yeah so participants uh do you guys want the practical session uh today itself or can we have it next session yeah. Yeah. we can have it today itself but uh, they want it with the session or after the session like after the people uh, lot, you you mean the, along the session the hands yeah, on yeah right okay i think it depends along the session, i guess okay i think along the session is would be better yeah. Uh, okay, sure, not a problem. Okay, and okay. go along the session as well. But make sure that doesn't disturb your uh, flow of the lecture. Okay, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, okay, okay. thanks, Kazala. Yes. So first is what we were going through was FASTA file format. So that I will show you because FASTA file format we can get from NCBI. So first we will check for NCBI database. I hope this is visible for all. So yes. But for the moment it's not visible they can see only the blur uh, slide so uh, is it my ncbi web page visible can you can you minimize and again come back just minimize and maximize okay um, yeah okay i will share this screen yeah, now so it's fine. probably it is visible yeah, now. Now it's fine. Yeah. Within NCBI, there is SRA database. So there are different databases itself, but but uh, right now we are just concerned about uh, sequence data. So within NCBI, we can get like for example any disease of interest. If uh, we see that lung cancer, so we can search within SRA database and here we have the sequenced data from Illumina platform. So yeah, uh, right now we have the data and we can see at the left side, there are different filters given that what kind of data you want. For example, we can filter uh, the data based on control uh, in sequenced or data available or publicly available data you want because control data, you need to take permission from the submitters 
that then they will, you will get the access for that data. And then there is DNA. Uh, if you are interested in DNA sequencing, then you can go for DNA, then RNA. You just need to filter the, based on your priorities that what kind of data you want. Then library layout, we can select for paired end or single end. So that all depend on what kind of preference you are having in your study or the current study which you are going to. Then uh, within NGS, we have Illumina platform, then we can check for and then RNA. So yeah, these are different filters. I can't just show all the things at once. So I'm just uh, giving you a brief idea that what kind of filters we have here and we can just filter the data based on our requirement and ad additional filters are also there that also you can just explore. So I'm just leaving it to you that you can explore it later and just giving you that idea. And then also the organism you can check. So different organism are also given here. So you can just select the organism and you can go to the data. So select, the, okay, because I think practical sessions are more interactive, so I will take more time here. Okay. So let's see if we have selected the Homo sapien and any of the data here from our data. Yeah, so here you can get a like brief information about what data you have here in this data set. And uh, yes, the construction protocol for this sequence data, which is present, and also the project ID, everything is given here. All the filter which you have applied will be mentioned here that uh, RNSA data and then paired and layout, everything will be mentioned here when it was published. Then you can check for like, what are the different samples given in this particular uh, data set. So yeah, you can just go forward for all the runs so that we can see what type of data is given in this particular data set. And we can see that cancer cell line data is given in this particular data set. And different uh, for different runs, so SRR stands for runs and S uh, SRX stands for experiments, SRA experiments. So yes, if we want to download faster file format, then we can also, uh, okay, so we have fast to file format here in this data set so we can just download uh, like any sample if you are interested if you are interested in all then you can just select all also and you can just get download these files whichever you are interested in you can just hit the link and you will get the download link from there okay so these are huge data you can see these are in gbs so that's not a problem. If you have a good internet connection, you can access any uh, size of data. Yeah, so here there is also brief information given about our data. What is the GC content in the data which we which you are uh, checking right now? And the uh, yeah, other experiments, platform, everything. If you want to do glass or the sequence which is stored in this particular sample, then you can directly Use the glass tool here. You don't have to go anywhere. You can directly use the insidia. So yeah, these are all the things you can just explore it. So I'm just showing you the overview from the database that how we can get the data. There is download option. You can directly download the fast view file from download option. So yeah, once you get the download option, then you want to explore the reads present in the particular sample then you can also check that okay so someone is asking can i be a little slow while explaining okay okay not a problem i'm just explaining it uh, like orally also so you can just uh, get the hint that what i'm explaining or you can query it uh, at the end so i will tell you again not a problem yeah, so FASTQ files we can download and that is the first step for data analysis. So yes, that is all about right now for NCBI. Let's go to the slides. I will explain, don't worry, whoever want, whoever is interested to explore more, and uh, I will explain to you. Because right now we have just an hour of session, so that's why I have to complete it all, whatever I have. 
uh, like promised. Yeah. So yeah, once we have the data, because se sequencing, we understand the basic theoretical aspect of sequencing, how the sequencing has been done. So that is uh, based on which sequencer we are using. And uh, yeah, from NGS sequencer, um, NGS based sequencers, which uh, so that when, once the data we are getting, so after that, once we have the data, what we can do with the data because sequencing has been done from the tool. And in the last session of NGS also, we saw that what uh, how the sequencing and all the things. So I think uh, we attended the last session as well. Right? So if you have any query in how the sequencing exactly has been done, so that also we can have a one session. You can tell me later. Okay. So yes, once we have the data, so we can just check the general overview of the workflow that how the data goes from uh, sample extraction on and step by step to the data analysis and interpretation because uh, any of the four stages which we have mentioned here, we can't stop in the middle because that will not make sense of the data till the end if you are not getting uh, not getting the interpretation from the data okay so sample extraction to the interpretation data analysis and then interpretation of data so this is the one uh, like start to end one complete workflow for engineers analysis yeah so each module we can explain one by one as well but that will take again uh, like an hour for one topic so we are just going through the overview Anyone, whoever is having query, you can just post it in chat box. I will check at, at, at the end and then I will explain it to you. Just don't worry about your queries, I will explain. Okay, so here we have like uh, steps given, like what are the basic steps you have to go from sample preparation data generation first the, the library preparation where we will be having the whole genome uh, sequence the genomic DNA so after that the sequencing libraries will be prepared by fragmenting the DNA uh, uh, yeah. and then adding adapters at both the end of the of the weeks and then uh, yeah second step will be cluster amplification so these are also part of the library uh, loading uh, of on the flow cells and then hybridization. So this is also based on, for example, if you see uh, like wet lab section of experiment. Next is sequencing. So this is uh, this is one of the important part where we will decide that which sequence we are going to select for sequencing of the data which we have. And here, based on that, we will get the like type of weeds in our output file. For example, fast file we have in the databases. So these uh, files which we are generated from the sequencers will be uh, saved in the fast file format in the databases which we were checking right now in NCBI that uh, that nucleotide sequences will be present in the fast files in form, and we call these sequences as weeds. Okay, so my voice is not clear. Uh, Mahesh, sir, can you please? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, uh, Ms. Kazala, I think you, you could speak a bit louder, right? Okay. Yeah, that, now, uh, is it fine? Yeah, this is better. Uh, so it's like okay. over the during the flow, you lost, I mean, you go okay. a bit slow. So make sure so, that. Okay, okay, sure. I will uh, check that. Yes. So while sequencing, that is one of the important step, like one of the important step, because all the steps are important because uh, in sequencing, we need to decide for which sequencing uh, sequencer we need to go for sequencing so that our, uh, we can get the results in real time. Uh, and that's why we are focusing more on NGS and it is also uh, like mostly in use these days because it can produce the results in real time uh, rather than taking days and months uh, such as Sanger sequencing and other sequencers which we were using earlier. So yeah, that is one of the important thing. And once the sequencing is been done uh, from, the, uh, from the sequencer, then we can get the results in fast file format 
uh, in form of reads, um, which means the nucleotide sequences, which will be available in FASTQ files, and that we were checking there in NCBI database that how we can get these sequenced files from the database, which is NCBI, which we are using majorly uh, because other databases are also there from where we can get the uh, fast few files but uh, right now we just gone through ncpi because of we have the time constraint so just to get the overview that how we can get from at least one database next we can also have an explanatory uh, session as well for these databases and to explore each database as well next is okay so we have the question but i will take it later so yeah not a problem Next is alignment and data analysis. So yes, once we have the reads in our uh, database and in the FASTQ file format, then we need uh, then one of the ma like major step is uh, to align it on the reference genome because uh, reference genome is the uh, reference genome is the whole genome from a human normal human sample. And it will contain all the uh, like G, all the sequence, nucleotide sequences from a, a normal healthy person, where we can map our reads from our own sequenced uh, data, which we have downloaded from the database, and we can map it so that we can check that which are the uh, like uh, nucleotides or alleles has been alternated from the normal to the diseased person or disease sample, we can say, and then uh, we can see that which are also deleted. And uh, so those are also called as uh, like alternation, alternation in the nucleotide sequences that we, that helps in. So there we use reference genome because it helps to understand the data and the missing data information and alternated uh, nucleotide sequences from the healthy person to the disease sample which you are working on. So these are the basic steps which we can do in uh, analysis. Okay, next is, uh, yeah, so alignment is one of the basic steps. For, for example, if we are working on one of the organisms which is not present or uh, first, so for example, right now when we are checking in NCBI, so there we saw that there was two organisms given human and uh, mouse. So for example, if you're working on other organisms which is not present in the database and who, uh, whose reference genome is not available in the database, then we need to go for de novo assembly. So there are two types of assembly as well. So for example, if we don't have a reference, so reference genome is kind of a reference to which we can uh, like check or cross check the reads and their positions and all the things. So if we don't have reference, so we go with de novo, which is kind of a new assembly. De novo is a alternate term for new. So yeah, so we go for new assembly. And if we have the reference, you know, for that particular organism, so we can just align, go for alignment or mapping of our reads present in our file, uh, a sequence file in to the reference genome you know, which is already available and that proceeds to RNA-seq and the chip-seq. So these, all the sequencing we can do, they're using uh, our reference genome you know, if it is available. So basically, we uh, used to prefer the organism, we used to prefer the study where we have the reference genome you know, because that is uh, much easier to work with. And yeah, we can use different things uh, because there is already information available for if the reference genome is available. So most of the information already available in reference genome. So it will be easier to interpret the data as well that where it is missing and what information we have. Yeah. So for the reference genome, so once we have the reference genome, there are for human sum for human. Uh, we have uh, two reference genome you know, right now in use, like for example, GRCH38 and GRCH37. So GRCH38 is the one uh, latest uh, updated one which we use mostly, and we can also use GRCH37. That's not a problem. But with the version change, we have little modification in the reference genome as well. For example, any gene is not already being discovered or not known. A past few five years in uh, then 
in the new version of the reference genome, we have that gene included in the reference genome. So that is one of the advantage of using the latest uh, reference genome which is available as of now. Yeah, so to check uh, for the, uh, what is uh, our, like to map the, our uh, sequence on the reference genome. So we can just use IGV, which is a genome viewer, genomic viewer. And uh, I have shared the link here and I will also share in the chat box for the IGV. You can just download it and check for like how we can, if we have the BAM file. So we need the BAM file, which is a binary file format where the aligned, uh, first we need to align our sequence on the reference genome and then we will get a BAM file format. So yeah, so that is that again, we can go back to that point that why we are studying about the file format because that is important. Every step of the analysis we will be having different file formats and we need to understand what each file format is having the data within. So here we will be having the BAM file format and that we can upload, which we will get after the alignment. We can upload in our, uh, so this we can use offline also in our desktop. So uh, IGV, so we can upload in our uh, PC and we can just view because this is for visualization purpose. We can upload our BAM file and then we can just map it because here we can see here that human genome human uh, genome version we can just select from here then chromosome then chromosome 6 all this information is uh, given here so let me just go back to the okay okay i will show you igv first so that we can see okay i have the already installed igv here so i will show you okay so reference section we can just upload whatever it a reference we want to select and there are different organisms uh, are given also because these organisms uh, reference you know we have already we can select for which one we want uh, anyone we can uh, hello select. kazala uh, the slide is not visible actually okay so um, individually probably i'm selecting individually for um, ppt and all okay so i think the better you you can yeah. start the desktop and then whatever yes, yes. keep it in the desktop it will be visible okay was my ppt uh, showing right now uh, uh, we have a blur screen so you can share the screen uh, not any applications alone. Okay, so I up have one. the option from for all. I don't have option. Okay, a screen. Yeah, the top one. Now. In the, in the yeah now we can see IGV yeah. Okay. We're talking yes. about IGV right? Yes yes we can okay. uh, so IGV here. We have the reference genome here. We can select whichever reference genome we want to select. For example, whichever organism you are working on. You can just go to that right now. We are just here on Homo sapiens. We can also download the sequence from here. It will take more time. So I'm just showing you here that how we can upload. It will take few minutes and it will upload the human genome version 38. Yeah, so it is uploaded right now was what we can do we just need to upload a bam file so that we will be having we will be having the sequence like aligned or mapped sequence here but right now i don't have it so we'll see it later or you can just upload it yeah so from here chromosome you can select whichever chromosome for example you are interested in any particular gene and you know the hour after the alignment you can check for example, let me show you that after the alignment, if you check that your gene is uh, in one particular gene at chromosome number seven, it is uh, like one nucleotide is mutated or uh, like deleted. So because uh, reference, you know, we have all the nucleotides, but in the, can you see my uh, PPT? 
Yeah. Okay. okay, sure. Then it's fine. I guess full screen is shared now. So yes, uh, from the reference room, we have all the nucleotides available, but uh, from uh, when we map it, uh, map our particular sequence, for example, it is a disease sample or whichever it is. So some of the nucleotides will be missing, which are not mapping on the reference genome. So we can just locate that which chromosome this uh, particular nucleotide or the sequence or is belong to. And we can check in IJV that, uh, for example, let's say chromosome number seven, I'm interested because there uh, it is not available. In chromosome number seven itself, we can see the, a lot of genes are there. At the bottom, you can see all the genes are given there. And then uh, these uh, P arm and Q arm is also given here. We can just zoom it also because right now I don't have BAM file. You can just upload BAM file once you do the sequencing and you do the analysis part because after alignment and mapping only, we can get the BAM file. So once we upload, we will be having that in that this section because we can see here, here we have the reads in the BAM because the BAM file is already uploaded in this section. So that we can see after, uh, yeah. So now once we are interested in chromosome number seven and we can see that at what location. So we can also change the location from here that we are- Hello, Kazala. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, I think here somebody need an explanation. I think it's, it's really important to give them an answer. So the sure, question no, from uh, Dr. Oh. Shiv. Um, okay, from Shiv. How to align them? So uh, I'm going to post all the question, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so Kazala, uh, I'm posting all the question for you. Okay, sure. So the first question um, from okay, Shiv Ali, and just sec stop and the and second question is from Shiv, uh, the IGV for visualization or alignment and how to align them or does he already mention about all these? Okay, let me check from the starting. I will first, okay, let's have one question answer session right now. So that I can answer one group of problems. So the first question from Diwali. Okay. How so is the reference genome standardized? And it might be different somewhere in different individuals. How to choose any one? Uh, the question from YouTube for this one. Okay. At what time this question was raised so that I can get this uh, uh, easily? Um, I think she have mentioned like just two minutes back. Okay, how this is reference genome is standardized. Okay, so reference genome actually we got from thousand project genome that we already know, or you can also read about it. Thousand project genome where a uh, thousand human genome project where thousand uh, people were being selected, all healthy people, and from them like their whole genome was extracted and then standardized based on that. So that to make sure that all the samples are from healthy uh, samples and then it was standardized based on that. And uh, latest, better to choose, for example, if you are starting your study right now or after this, so better to choose whichever is the latest version. Because right now we have GRCS 38 as the latest version, but still few people are using GRCS 37 because they, their studies has been already going on from past few years when GRCS 38 was not there. So they can't uh, skip from GRCS 37 to 38 in between. So that's why they are working on GRCS 37 itself. But if you are studying from fresh or now on, then we can use the latest version because the new gene which are being uh, like coming into existence or being discovered now after like within one year or two year back, then they will be included in GRCS 38, not in GRCS 37. In GRCS 37, they are included as the gene name with their location name, for example, LOC. You can also check in the reference, you know, when you will download it in GTF format. So yes, the GT, uh, reference you know, file format is GTF file format. And uh, you can also check there that some of the gene names are given as LOC00 and some few numbers there uh, because those gene names are yet were yet not discovered then. 
so after that like school genes are came to uh, known and got discovered and named them as in particular their as their name so that's how we use new gene uh, reference genome for example grcs38 because here we will be having more uh, accurate gene name rather than missing uh, other genes which were there I and mean, as loc or something not exactly the gene name which we are looking for so that is the first your query dipali hope that was the answer uh, to your question uh, yes. dipali is in youtube so i hope uh, see okay sure okay next if there is your question then i will so, take it later so the next question is from dr shiv i think uh -huh. you have already addressed this question IGV you... for visualization or alignment? No, IGV is only for visualization. Once you are done with the alignment, then IGV will will be used for visualization that where which gene in which gene your uh, nucleotides are missing or uh, whichever information is present or not on which particular chromosome, what particular location. So this is just our visualization tool. We can also see. Uh, like name igv full form is integrative genomic viewer so it is only viewer not the alignment tool how to align okay so alignment is also one of the step in uh, ngs analysis where we there are different an alignment tools that we can check there for example uh bwa man is there then top hat is there so there are different alignment tools that we first need to check for that when we are doing the analysis. So this IGV is the next part after the analysis. Okay, that she already mentioned. You can directly uh, ask to me, you know, okay. Reference, you know, anything else from Alcott? Okay, reference from Alcott. Reference genome is a set of gene in one idealized individual organism of a species. Is this the question or answer? I Hello, Elkart. Uh, can you uh, ask okay. your question directly here? Hello, Elkart. Actually, we need to know is this a question or just you are uh, giving the information? Uh, hello, Elkart. You are unmuted. Uh, can you? Clarify. Can you clarify? Can you clarify your question? Okay. Okay. Maybe he is not there. You can ask your question ending with question mark so that we can understand it is the information or question. Okay. Then Next we can start with God another and... question from Garvey. The basic question is: All the data in this SRA is published, and how do we upload it to database? Okay, so all the data in SRA is not published. We need to check for it that either your data, whichever you are checking, is published or not because it will be available. This information will be available there itself when you are checking for your data. Let me show you here. Uh, you can see my LCBI screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I hope this is not a problem. Okay, you can see here it is published in 2020. Uh, okay, 8th of May. 2020 so if it is mentioned as published it means it is published already and uh, and you can also see the publication will be also uh, attached with the particular data set so here it is the show abstract so you can see the abstract as well for the publication which is already uh, like published for this particular data set if it is not um, if it is not published you can also you can do your analysis with this particular data set and your next question is how do we upload it to database? Okay, so there is different uh, section in the in NCBI and all the databases to upload your data so that uh, we can check and we will check it later because right now. Okay, let me show you here itself. So that uh, it will be okay. Submit. So there, this is the first option itself. You can submit your data or the manuscript in NCBI database. So this is your section of interest. You can just go with it. Okay, next is. Another question, I think we can unmute Saranya so she can ask directly because it seems very long question. Uh, hello, Saranya. Yes. Uh, can you ask your question directly to uh, Ms. Kazala? Hello. Yes, yes, hi. 
Hi, Saranya. You can ask your question. Uh, uh, hello, Saranya. You can. Yes, sir. Actually, we process the sample, sir. So we got the data in CSV file format. And we couldn't able to process the data whether we want to uh, check with the NCBI or some other, I, I don't know, it is a basic question I'm asking. Uh, what can be done with the data we obtained from? We process the sample out, uh, they have been given the data in a format. We are having, uh, for example, uh, so many things uh, they have been coded in that uh, uh, file. So we couldn't be able to process the data. What are the things we can be done with that, ma'am? Okay. So what kind of uh, processing has been done for the data which you have provided? Uh, for me, uh, actually, we processed healthy samples. Uh, actually, we are working on uh, gut microbiome. Okay. So we have been given abundance of have been given. Uh, this one um, average uh, DNA base pair length have been given. So we are confused okay. with what can be done further more. Okay. CSV file format means like uh, this is comma separated values, right? So yeah, we have information yeah. there. Actually, I think uh, I need to check the data first so that I can tell you exactly what to do with your data. Okay, so you can connect uh, with me, but uh, I will provide you the information like my email ID or the contact. No, so maybe Saranya, uh, after the lecture, you can send your question and queries to Telegram channel and uh, Kazala can answer from the okay. channel. Is it okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Sure, you so, can just yeah. share a sample section of your data so that I can check not the whole data mm -hmm. if there is like privacy concerns. You can just a section of yes, your, share the section of your data. I will check and let you know. Okay. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, you have uh, two more questions. Maybe we can continue the questions uh, at the end of the session. Okay. Yes. 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 Sure. So because thanks for the basic question, so I will continue that. Yeah. IGV we were checking, so there are different options here for IGV. In IGV, like you can zoom it up, you can just check that what are the genes and where your reads are present. So if you have the BAM file, we can see it uh, like accurately that what we are exactly checking for. And there, here also you can check their exons in the gene. For example, one particular gene is there, what is the particular location and uh, yeah, which arm and exactly the location. So whenever we will move from one uh, location to other, the distance and the location will be changing by itself. So we can move by dragging it. Uh, so yeah, this is all about IGV. And uh, once we get the sequenced uh, aligned file, so that will be easier to work with. And uh, yeah, you can also check for this tutorials for IGV, so it will be easier for you to understand. Yes, so um, yes, IGV is done. I will show you the link so that you can download it. Next is application of NGS. So yes, high throughput sequencing is NGS itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, so what we can do, so there we can also go for mutation studies if you have the data from in NGS sequencers. And then uh, for sequencing and all uh, means expression study as well as uh, mutation study. Then metagenomics uh, study as well, we can go for that. So there are different applications for NGS. Once we have the data, we can go for any kind of analysis, whatever is required or whatever we are interested in. So yeah, that is one of the advantages that we can do different types of study for same set of data. For example, you have downloaded one data set or you have the one data set or one file itself if you are having, then you can do different kind of analysis with the same data and you can produce different types of results with it. So yes, there is uh, a lot of scope for generating the results with the end use data. Next is regarding, okay, these are just uh, job oriented things like bioinformatic companies there are which are offering jobs. So you can also check them. 
like there are different agent is there then base four is there bio discovery is there you can just check that they are offering good job and good uh, packages also so, yes those who are interested in jobs uh, or right now looking for it it's job profiles what kind of job you can get for example you are good in programming so you can uh, go for database uh, development then bioinformatics software development, which are based on different algorithms where we need, you need programming skills as well, then sequencing and all those analysis uh, section also that include. Then any job opportunities in India, you can see at different uh, websites where every time, like every day, thousands of jobs has been posted and you can check that some of them are taking like very less experience or uh, experience years to start with uh, some of are asking like more two to four years or three to six years for uh, like experience for work now you can ask your question we already had this can okay there is any query more more queries uh, do we have more queries or shall we find the session Okay, so if you want to help uh, someone or uh, so she will be, uh, Saranya will be posting her question or query in the Telegram uh, platform. You can just answer her there. Right now we are having NGS session. You can just ask queries here. Okay, which programming? Okay, if you are going for uh, bioinformatics specifically, then they will be, there are, uh, Python, Perl, and R. These three programming languages are most preferred. So yes, could you please address and, and, uh, uh, participants? Please limit your question only related to this topic. And if you have any question related to your project, you can contact the tutor uh, in the channel. And if the tutor is fine, then you can ask her in personal email. So as of now, we can limit the question only related to the uh, session today. So uh, Kazala, uh, you have one more question from Yash. Uh, yes. Uh, what is the difference between mate part sequence and part in sequence? I can't see the question actually. And so uh, uh, I'll post it to you. I'll post okay. it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I got it, sir. 6, 3 p.m. Yeah, what is the difference between weight paired sequencing and paired in sequencing? Okay, so weight paired sequencing are like first, okay, so there are first two type of, generally we talk that single end sequencing is paired in sequencing. There, so that difference you might know, that's why because you are, you have the advanced question. And weight paired sequencing uh, might be, Okay. Probably I need to check on this because mate paired sequencing are in uh, in pair. For example, if you have two sequences of the same length and uh, same number of nucleotides only because they are same length. So probably that is the mate pair sequencing. I will check and confirm on it and then we'll let you know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mr. Yas, uh, can you uh, go, with, go ahead with your another question? Uh, we have unmuttered you. Hello, Yash. And Yash, I have another question. How to generate paired end reads and use of it? Okay, single end reads and paired end reads generated by the sequencer itself. So there uh, we have the different type of sequencer and we need to opt for either we want the paired end sequences or single end sequences. So that is depending on the sequencer we are using. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have another uh, very basic question regarding NGS sequencing. Yes, please go ahead. So, uh, suppose, uh, so uh, we uh, earlier we were taught about shotgun sequencing where we fragment the DNA and uh, each fragmented uh, DNA is, uh, we generate, the, the fragments are then uh, put it in, put, we put those fragments into 
the flow cell and yeah. they undergo clonal amplification and the sequencing reads are generated yes. so i assume that the, that is the basic of sequencing for illumina sequencing yeah, that right. i'm talking about and okay. so my question is that uh, say suppose i have uh, 100 uh, 100 150 base pairs of fragment right Okay. Now, that is the template strand and so how do we control that uh, so suppose 100 150 base pairs is the fragment length but reads may be of varied length reads may be as the sequence is generated reads might be generated so we have 50 base pair reads or 70 base pair reads and the coverage also might be different so how do we control the coverage and the length of the reads so reads, uh, okay, read lengths may vary, but uh, but in NGS sequencing we have short reads, so because that will be easier to handle the data and for sequencing also. That's why it is generating real time uh, results and sequence data. Is that your question? Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm, my question is that. So uh, while sequencing, yes. how do how would we come to know that say I have a, a hundred base pair fragment that I want to sequence? Just for example. So how will we uh, before the before putting into sequencing can we yes. estimate the output that how many reads might get generated or uh, is there a setting that we can do? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. what okay. would be I the coverage? Your, okay, I understood your question. So that is the uh, yeah that is the option for sequencer we want to get for example we want this length of sequence reads for example 100 base pair reads alone so then we can just uh, give it to the sequencer and then uh, we will, it will be generating 100 base pair reads so like that so that is okay. based on sequencer we are using and which options we are using there and so the the option for coverage is also given there Yes, coverage also. Yeah, that is the all the parts of the sequencer alone. Okay. So, uh, how how is it that some regions have a very high coverage and some regions have a very low coverage? There is no uniformity in the coverage. Then, uh, how is that uh, possible, or how how does that happen? Regarding coverage, I guess. I need to check because it may be possible because of the whatever genes uh, where these reads are present, uh, their expression, like how they are expressed, maybe because of that. But uh, I need to check it that so I will get you back. Get back okay, to okay, you. okay yeah. no problem. Because mo mostly the coverage is the uh, major factor that we look into variant discovery. Yeah, right, right. If we right. have high coverage for alternate alleles. Then it is easier to uh, you know predict that yeah this is a variant. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because of the coverage, we can also get like uh, insight for that. Yes, yes. Alien. But if if there is a low coverage, then somehow uh, the if 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 that might be also a variant, but it doesn't get showed up. Yeah, right. So I, I can just understand had that, that doubt that how are these reads generated and how the does the coverage uh, like the everything regarding coverage take place no problem i'll 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 you check it out and you can post yeah, the yeah, solution i will get back Telegram. to you for sure uh, yeah no problem, no problem thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thank you Mahesh, sir any further query is there can you please check? Hello? Hello? Okay. At what level are students should apply interest in their projects related to art and innovation? And that will be okay. Hello, Kazala. Yes, sir. So you have a question from Mr. Sh and Dr. Shiv. I think it's a very basic question. Uh, CSV files are generally provided with analyzed sequence data by companies. So he misunderstood. I mean, he, they don't have a basic information about what is CSV file is about. Uh, 
I guess this is not a question. This is just uh, this is a sentence. What I can see. Okay. Okay. Because it is not ending with question mark, so I can't okay. consider it as a okay. question. Okay. Okay. Okay, so then we can move to another question. There is so many questions from bio server. So I'll try to unmute him or her. Then we can ask question directly from him. Uh, hello, bio server. Uh, you can ask your question. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, please, uh, can you please mute? Uh, I mean, there are a lot of background noise. There is noise. We can just take the question from the box. Okay, okay. I think we'll try to. Am I audible now? Yeah, it's audible now. Uh, see, uh, I've got uh, students coming uh, asking about the engineers in their applications. I've got uh, uh, hello, Bayasa. You are not audible. Your voice is breaking. Uh, now it's clear? Yeah, it's clear, but we are having too much background noise. Actually, I don't have a. I'm inside a room. I've got nothing. Okay, okay, so maybe then we can just read out the question. Oh, okay, Magesh, uh, Dr. Magesh, can you translate the question which I have sent to you? Sure, 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 sure. I'll do that. Okay, just uh, okay, let me take the question from the chat box itself. What is the role of NGS for students who are doing final year bachelor project? So, that is the role of NGS for students. That is depending on what section of uh, like NGS, either they are doing a sequence section or analysis part. So that will be depending on that because most of the time we are doing analysis. So, and uh, next section is many students are misguided while doing projects. I don't know what kind of misguidance is this. So if you just can tell me uh, later that uh, what exactly the issue is so that I can uh, answer based on that. And yes, for N NGOs for students, uh, means they can do they can start from like uh, from the first step that is the sample preparation to the like analysis data analysis and then uh, result interpretation so that which will further leads to publication and all the other things like for example a research kind of a project or so every project in like ngs will leads to a research publication itself a short or a big a bigger paper or something like that so yeah we can do uh, like if someone if any student is doing ngs or interested in ngs so that we consider it as a full-fledged ngs for example starting from basics that is the sample preparation first step to the last step that is the analysis and interpretation of results so that uh, i could suggest to students who are even they are in, in their bachelor's or master's program so for all of them, at what level a student should apply engines in their project uh, to see viable innovation and transparency? Okay, at what level? So, yeah, that depends on a student. Uh, for example, if they are interested in the in learning, so they can start with it in their bachelor courses itself. Like for example, graduate program. Uh, if they are interested, if there is no beginning kind of thing. It just need to have your interest. Wherever there is an interest, you can just go there to apply. Can you please uh, share slides as well on the channel? Yeah, that will be shared. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that need to confirm. Uh, I hope we have uh, bio server. Uh, maybe we can ask him. Uh, hello, Bayasa. Is that your question is answered? Are you okay with answers? Uh, yes, my Dr. Malish. Okay, okay. And, uh, will... I'm, just, I'm just concerned about that. Uh, there was one query that many students are misguided while doing projects. I just uh, uh, I think uh, will want to know that what kind of uh, thing uh, so that we can check on these because yeah, right. Uh, hello bio server actually in the telegram channel we okay. can post with add button comment so you can post all your questions there we'll try to uh, answer there okay, I'll do it. Okay. okay thank you because we are we are working on this field itself so we just need to know that what kind of uh, like 
uh, what kind of things are going on in, uh, in the surrounding or in other programs. So that's why. Next is, yes, one more thing. I have to take it from Markship, okay? Do you have any experience with network derivation? Yes, we have, and we have already worked on it uh, in many projects. So yeah, whatever is like exactly your from differential. Yes, I have experience if I can uh, answer it in short, but if you want it uh, like explanation, or for example, if you have any certain specific query for what kind of tools you want to use for network derivation and all these things, so that you can ask there in Telegram uh, group, and then I can tell you what is the best method for data normalization, RPPM or FPPM, and how many samples you experience or why for data normalization? Okay, data normalization. I guess RPPM and FPPM. Both are used and both have advantages and disadvantages. So we can't just say that which one is best because we use both of them. So yeah, and uh, with experience, how many samples with experience are required for data normalization? Data normalization, okay. So I guess whatever number of samples you have, you can just go for this uh, data normalization. That's not a problem. Yes, sure. See, every tool, uh, I'm just answering to Shift that he is asking that which is the best method because every tool, there are a uh, thousand of tools are there for analysis and all the steps for data analysis, normalization, or uh, like all types of analysis. So we can't just tell that which is the best one, but what we see that whichever the most, most which is used in by most of the uh, people uh, in the field and which is giving good results uh, based on the timings, based on the results. Uh, so all these things matters when we do the analysis. If one tool is taking 10 minutes for the answer and one tool is taking one hour, so we will prefer the one tool which is giving in one minute the result. And that should be uh, like results should be sufficient also, not like uh, missing results or the. So first we need to do some research on the tool itself before using it. Then we will, uh, we decide that which tool we need to go further for the analysis. Okay. Thank you. So hope everyone uh, are think, done with their questions. Yeah. So if any question is missing, you can, uh, if you have skipped by chance, I tried not to skip, but if there is any skipped question, you can just ask in Telegram or, or you can also connect later also. Or if you want any other session, like for example, specific to databases or specific to any one module of NGS because one module will take uh, around one to two hour or more to explain. So for that, we need to arrange the classes accordingly. So you can just, this was just an overview. So you can just tell it us, tell it to us in Telegram itself. Okay. So I hope there are no more questions, but if you have any questions, kindly post it in the Telegram channel. Uh, with an add button comment, and we will look into it, and we'll try to uh, answer. We'll, we'll try our best to answer all the questions. So, so because I, I think it's uh, fine now. Is it okay? Sure. Yeah. So, so thank you so much, Kazala. It was a wonderful session, and thanks for your time. And we will welcome you for the next session. And I'll try to ask the students what are their expectation then we can plan the next session according to that, okay? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, most, I will be there for any session, whatever they want, so that let's see what they want exactly. Okay. okay. Because uh, if, for example, if I have explained NGS in four steps, then each step will be taking at least one minimum, one to two hours to explain it to me, explain it to everyone and with their queries. So yeah, we can accordingly plan. Okay.
Okay. And, and if you have a time, try to look at all the comments in the uh, Telegram channel. And it would be really helpful for the students as well as the, our team. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kazala. So, and all the participants, thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for joining today. So, we will see you tomorrow session at um, 3 30 p.m. in molecular dynamics simulation. And we have a, a fourth session for Sunday evening at website development. So, we'll see you tomorrow, everyone. So, thank you so much. And, and please don't forget to give your feedbacks in Telegram channel. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you.